Hey there. So, uh, Moto Chiba, AKA Wes, and we're going to do another session of the visual owner's manual for your Indian FTR 1200 or 1200S. As some of you may know, there was recently a recall issued on the FTR, the first recall, hopefully the only recall, but we'll find out. And it involves some special kind of fuses that are known as automotive circuit breakers, thermally resettable automotive circuit breakers. And uh, <clears throat> there's three of them on the bike that were apparently poor quality. So Indian is gonna replace them, but the, apparently they're not supposed to get the parts for another few weeks. The weather's still nice, so I'm still riding, but I don't wanna take any chances on getting stranded anywhere because of a busted or, or circuit breaker that behaves poorly. Um, so I just figured out what parts were and with a little help from the internet and all the smart people out there. And I got these off Amazon for $5.87 a piece. I got four, even though you're only supposed to replace three. I wanted to make sure I had a spare. So I'm gonna get into the fuse box and show you how to do that. So it's not difficult. You can do this if you don't wanna wait for your dealer and if, or if your dealer's a long ways away from your house like mine is. Mine's about an hour away, which is really not that far, but um, I don't wanna go up there even when I do have to wait or even after they do get the parts in. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. And uh, like I said, it's not difficult and you only need one tool and a little bit of patience and you'll be fine. This is the tool you need. It's a six millimeter hex or driver or Allen. Pretty sure it's the same size that you would use to take the seat off. So that's pretty handy. We're on the right side of the bike, just behind the radiator. This is the fuse box cover here and it's got three fasteners in it. I don't know if they're captive or not. I guess we're about to find out. And they are not, so make sure you put those in a safe place. Okay, inside, you can see there's two more connectors. They are not six millimeters, they're smaller, which is a pretty good indicator that you ain't supposed to take them off. So don't take them off. You just need to open the fuse box. And we're gonna get down here and figure out how to do that. Once you get the cover off, there's four tabs, two on the bottom, two on the top. All you do is you squeeze the two tabs, the the bottom tabs you squeeze up, the top tabs you squeeze down, and the cover comes right off, just like that. Now you can see the three that were taken out, replacing, and they fit into these. There you go. There's cutouts in the fuse box cover that they go into. So we're gonna take those three out. Remember it's fan, engine, and ignition. So, fan, engine, ignition. And we're gonna put those, so you flip these, so they say, so you can see the 10, and then you slide them right back in where the other ones came out. They do not have to be forced in. They slide right in real easy. One, two, three. And you can see that the regular fuses are shorter. So these are not typical fuses. Like I said, they're thermally resettable circuit breakers. So when they get hot, they trip. When they cool off, they reconnect. And then these other things here are relays. I put the lid back on, the cover. You can start at the bottom or the top, just kind of guide it in. And you want to hear one, two, three, four clicks. I only heard three clicks, but they all went in, trust me. And then we put the cover back on. Now this is no reason to do these in tight. You just want them snug. So you definitely don't want to strip those or cross thread them. So just take your time and go until they're 
give you a little bit of resistance and snug them up. There's no reason to Gorilla Grip these. And you're done. Easy peasy. I almost forgot the critical last step. Anytime you do anything with the electronics on your motorcycle, you should always make sure you don't get any fault codes. So we're gonna check this, watch and wait and see what happens. Gauge is loaded just fine. Now she's neutral. We're gonna make sure it starts up. Heard the fuel pump cycle and she starts up no problem. There you go, that's it. You've addressed the recall. And if you live a distance from, a good distance from a dealer, or you don't wanna wait for them to get into parts, you can get them like I did for $5.87 a piece off Amazon. They came the next day. I guess I live close to a fulfillment center. And uh, it took about five minutes. If I hadn't been messing with the cameras, it probably would have taken me a little bit less. Three bolts, one tool, squeeze, squeeze, Pop, 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 you're done. Real easy. And uh, now when you, next time you take your bike to the dealership, they may actually replace those anyways. Uh, so make sure you have a talk with your service advisor and uh, take care of your bike because you don't want to violate your warranty. Violate, is that the right word? Yeah, we'll go with that one. And uh, if you do do this on your own, make sure that you document it, keep your receipt, that way you don't have any warranty claim issues later on. Take it easy. This is Motochiba and the FTR 1200S Visual Owner's Manual.